Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and welcome to a very special weekly Svelte. Now, it's special because I just got done watching the Svelte Summit finale, so to say, and they just announced that Svelte Kit is officially in release candidate, which means that hopefully breaking changes, or at least planned breaking changes, will be non-existent. That said, there's there still may be some breaking changes, right? But let's say planned breaking changes are no longer going to be here, meaning that we can start to feel more confident and more comfortable writing our Svelte Kit apps, knowing that there's not going to be any major changes in how we do things. And it's especially huge on the heels of such an amazing couple of releases. Now, one of those was what we talked about in our live stream, as well as a little bit talking about the changes to the routing structure. I have thoughts on that, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a post-mortem on our transition into the new routing structure in a little bit. But I figured now would be a good time to talk about form actions. I just did a two hour long stream on this yesterday. So if you want to watch me really implement this in our site fully, you can check out that video to get a little bit more of a long winded uh, real world use of these new form actions. But what we're going to be talking about in this video is just a high level of form actions, what they are, why they're useful and why this is a great new API for SvelteKit. Now, form actions are a way to integrate into the Svelte endpoint system with props and form data in a way that allows you to work with real HTML forms and then enhance them progressively via a Svelte action. This means that your site will submit forms and submit form data correctly to the correct endpoints, even if JavaScript is turned off by the user, making these things truly part of the platform. We're using the web platform here and it feels great, um, especially combined with Svelte's kind of best in class form handling anyways on top of that. Um, it, it's funny, I had a bit of an epiphany while working on this stuff is that I don't need controlled inputs anymore. You know, coming from a React world, you want to control all those inputs because in, in React, you kind of have to, right? It React kind of stinks to do forms without controlled inputs. But here, we get to have access to all sorts of form data and easily use forms without any fancy form handling. And it is spectacular. So let's talk about form actions. What is a form action? Basically, a form action is a function that is run server side whenever a form is submitted. You can think of if we're sending a post request from a form as we have over here, we have a method form or a form with a method of post. And this on page.svelte is going to look into the same folder, into the same route, anytime we're submitting a form with method of post into the page.server.ts, where it's then going to look for the default action. You export const actions from your page.server.ts, and then if you have a default property in this object, it will run this function. And it's really just submitting a normal form. You'll see that we just have a form not a fancy form. I have a fancy inputs component, but that's just my own thing. A fancy button, because that's my own thing as well. But if you ignore the use in hands, all we have here is a form with a method of post, which will then send that request data to a default action. In that default action, you can do anything. And in fact, in here, we're doing a find one and update directly into our database after we get the data from the form. So the form comes in as HTML or, or JavaScript form data, not HTML, JavaScript form data. We're able to transform and get the data out of that to do whatever we want server side. And then I ran it through a couple of uh, stringify and parse to, to work out some stuff. I, I'm thinking this might change in Svelkit at some point. Either way, we're returning JSON out of here. And what happens then is that JSON comes back to our page. Now it comes back to our page in a couple of ways. It could come back to our page in the form of a prop named export let form. Now you'll see I don't have that in this example, but it comes back in the form of a prop or it comes back using the use enhance action. Now use enhance is a new action or enhance I should just say that comes in from app forms and enhance allows you to progressively enhance your forms because when you submit a form in HTML, it does a full page reload when it sends that request. 
However, with this use enhance, it's preventing default on the form. It's invalidating the data on the server after the response automatically, and it's allowing us to cancel the request for any given reason. You'll notice that we have the use enhance, and if we pass in a custom function in here, we get access to the form itself, which is the HTML element of the form, the data, which is the form data, and we get access to a cancel function of which we could just run cancel right here and it would cancel the form before it's submitted. Now there's also a return out of here and the return is a function that gives you uh, the results. So this return function will run after the form is submitted. Now I have a red squiggly line on here, so don't worry about that, but you can get access to the result of the form submission. So you'll see that in this example, I'm saying if result type is equal to success, alert post updated. Pretty neat, huh? And this is going to do this also that you get the standard form action stuff where a form is going to submit on the server side no matter what, but if you use use enhance, it's not going to do that full page refresh and it's gonna allow you to step in and take control over JavaScript. Now the cool thing here is that the default isn't the JavaScript part of it. The default is the form just working as it's supposed to, and then you can enhance it to use JavaScript to have a better experience without a full page refresh if you'd like, and I'd like. Now you can also uh, even just say use enhance right here like this without any options, and it's gonna do the same thing. That's wonderful, right? You only need this function, this extra bit, if you want to take more control over it, okay? You can see I'm not even using these variables. I just had them in here for demonstration. Now let's take a look. So by default, we have the ability to specify a default action. And that default action, as we mentioned, is going to fire anytime there's a post request on the same route. And likewise, you could do more than that. You can also invoke an action from other pages by passing in a route into the action. And that's going to coincide with the routing structure of your application and look for page.server.ts. In addition, you can also have named actions. Instead of having a default, you could have additional named ones. And to access a named action, you just use a query parameter inside of your form. So you just say, question mark forward slash then the name of your action. And if you wanted to use a named action from another route, you do the route question mark forward slash register. This is a query parameter, folks. This is nothing fancy. So some people might look at this and say, all right, great, more special characters. No, it's a query parameter. Well, the coolest part about all of this API is that it's doing all of the hard stuff for you and letting you use the form API as it was intended essentially on the web in the first place. Now there's a lot more here and a lot of cool stuff, but I want to show you really quickly how we're using this. You can see in this example here, export let form, you get access to the form information after the form is submitted. And uh, I, I do want to state that that actually goes away if you have your own custom use enhance, you'll have to do that yourself. But if you are just using the straight up normal use enhance, that will work just fine. You can do validation errors in here and um, you'll see in maybe one of our examples here. Let's grab one of our server routes here, we are based on if the user has the correct access role, where if the user is not an admin, we're throwing an invalid function. I mean, we're not, we're not throwing it, we're calling an invalid function and we're saying 401, which will return that message saying that it is a, the response was invalid and that it was an unauthorized request. They don't have the level of permissions. So this API, let me tell you, is rock solid. It's super good. It's, um, I mean, it has been updated a, a couple times since they dropped it, but in terms of uh, when I say rock solid, I mean, it is awesome to use. It feels great to use. In practice, we already have several of our routes using this thing. And I gotta say, it, it's, it's fantastic. It allows you to quickly and easily work with your data in a nice, fast way. And there's enough flexibility here that you can, can take control over where you want. In fact, one of the cool things we even did was we wrote our own custom form action uh, factory function, as you can see here. And this form action, in, in, in this function here, what it does is it sends a toast message. So we passed in use enhance and it checks the response to make sure the response is correct. And it sends either green or red or blue toast message based on whatever the result of the request is with a given message. Really neat, right? So this API, this thing is awesome. Form actions officially, uh, pro 
I would, I don't want to say maybe there's too many great features in Svelte Kit, but Form Actions just might be my favorite feature in Svelte Kit, and it's brand new. So check this thing out. Uh, if you want to see a full on me using this in a real world example, watch that live stream we did yesterday. It was really informative. We learned a whole lot together. A lot of people joined in and helped out and uh, answered some questions along the way. We did a bit of a Q&A on it. And you can see how I use this thing in the real world. So this is the Form Actions API in Svelte Kit. Let me know what you think of this thing. Uh, post in the comments. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, do you wish that Svelte Kit would stop adding new features? Me personally, this thing right here makes so much of the other stuff worth it because this is the stuff right here. This is just wonderful. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. If you want to learn Svelte, Svelte Kit, and just about anything, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. We have new tutorial courses every single month, and we have a massive redesign that we're working on right now, one of which you can get a bit of a sneak peek on in that video. This is um, not the actual... <laughs> This is not the actual site. This is our dev site here. But you can get a bit of a sneak peek on what this site is looking like and how it's uh, shaping up because every single day I add a little bit more to this and it just gets better and better and better. Right now I'm kind of working on some of these card designs. The card designs aren't final. Uh, getting jiggy with it is obviously not a correct title here. But this library page is really starting to come together and one of the new highlights of this website in my mind. So we'll check it out. Hop on the live stream. Let me know what you think. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Check out syntax.fm if you uh, want to have a web dev podcast. We get a ton of people checking in three days a week on syntax. Um, head on over to the Level Up Tutorials Discord if you want to chat all things Svelte, web development, Ruby on Rails, PHP, literally anything you possibly can think of in the web dev world, we're on it. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.